Well, Leamington returned to the Phillips 66 for the first time in over a month and a half on Tuesday night as they booked themselves a place in the third round of the Birmingham Senior Cup, squeezing past Banbury United courtesy of a last gasp Josh March winner. With the weather causing havoc in October and November fixture lists up and down the country, Leamington's form has also hit a bit of turbulence of late. With just four wins in their last 12 games, Holloran will take confidence from his side's two wins on the spin in the past week. Today, the Brakes are seeking away into the first round proper of the FA Trophy after being knocked out by National League side Hartlepool United last time out. The Leamington side sees five changes to the one that started against Banbury on Tuesday night. And it's a late call-up for Connor Taylor, who uh, sports the number nine shirt this afternoon following uh, Josh March's departure from the starting eleven. He must have picked something up in the pre-match warm-up. Following a shaky start to the season that saw just one win in ten league games, it looked like it was going to be a long campaign for Spennymore Town. But all of that changed following a 2-1 victory over Kidderminster in late October, with the Moors going on to win five of their next six league games. They will be making the long trip south to the Phillips 66 this afternoon and looking to continue their snowballing momentum that has been built up in the northeast over the past month. Jake Weaver just uh, keeping the ball in these opening stages, Lemington. Weaver, this time Buddle, able to easily beat Anderson in the air, Edwards. Rising in the midfield, it's flicked on towards Taylor. Taylor sees the run of Roberts in behind. Big shout from Jake Weaver. Good clearance. Straight to Chandler, who goes for the spectacular. Trying to use the uh, zip of the turf to his advantage. Didn't quite get a hold of it. And Jake Weaver can uh, comfortably gather. Dunbar, left arm raised. It's deep. Rising was Edwards. It was sort of a combination of his own player, Cayman Anderson and Romshaw on the line that blocked the effort. McKenna looking to leave the ball, let it run. But uh, James Mace well aware to tap out of play. 13 minutes gone. Leamington free kick in a very threatening position. Joe Clark, it's an inviting delivery. Gould came, didn't make any contact. Anderson slipped at the vital moment and Gould can gather. What a let off for Spenny Moore Town. Anderson just losing his footing at the back post at the vital moment. Stefan Morley then sporting the uh, thermal under armour. It's in towards Anderson, chest down in the penalty area. There's Taylor with the effort yes! and Connor Taylor drives it into the bottom corner to give Leamington the lead on the 18 minute mark. And maybe the FA Trophy dream will continue for Leamington as they draw first blood in the third qualifying round against the team that sit fourth in the National League North Spennymore Town. And it's Connor Taylor with a piece of precision, a piece of placement. Brilliant work from Cayman Anderson. A late call up up front, but he's shown his worth. Good hold up play from him. Just chests it down. And Taylor sh showing all sorts of composure to pick his spot and place it in the bottom corner past Matthew Gould. It's Leamington 1, Spennymore Town 0. English with a firm header forward. Buddle. Lofted ball upfield. Taylor will give chase. Mace needs to be careful. Taylor's found a way in behind here. First time on his left foot. Almost found that bottom corner. Fizzing in across the face of goal. A tricky effort for the uh, Spennymore Town top goal scorer. Here's McKenna. Loses out once again. A firm challenge by Junior English. Dunbar. Spennymore looks stretched here. Dunbar still. Still going. Kieran Dunbar will pull the trigger. Picked up by Anderson. Look to feed Kieran Dunbar once again, but McKenna alert to uh, carry out his defensive duties. Taylor with a heavy touch towards his own goal. Eventually fires up the line for Rumshaw to give chase. Weaver quickly out of his goal. There's Buddle. Time for Joe Clark to uh, set himself before picking out Connor Taylor. He loses out to uh, Hibbs. Clark will pick it up once again and drive through the midfield. It's open up here for Clark. Came Anderson. Inches past the post came Anderson as uh, Matthew Gold came rushing out of his goal. It was fantastic play by Joe Clark in the build-up. Just got away from his marker and a brilliant through-the-eye-of-the-needle ball from the uh, Leamington midfielder to find Anderson. He did well to work it onto his right foot but just couldn't find the right side of the post. Firing his effort into the side netting. McKenna is uh, available on the left-hand side. Here he is. Romshaw is ahead of him in turquoise. Still with McKenna. Stood up by English. Here's Romshaw. 
Mason. It's Roberts who's come short. English with a, uh, Edwards with a retreating challenge even. And stabbed away by James Mace. Taylor will pick up in the left back position. Maybe one last throw of the dice in the first half for Spennymore Town. It's a lovely ball through by Ramshaw. And it's palmed away at his front post by Jake Weaver. Two big firm hands there from the Leamington goalkeeper. It was a good ball through by uh, Ramshaw. Good vision from the, the Spennymore centre attacking midfielder. In comes the Spennymore corner. Weaver came. Might come for Ramshaw to strike. Inches away from that left-hand post. Definitely got everything behind it, did Ramshaw. Struck it with such venom, but uh, couldn't uh, divert it. The right side of the post. English. Dunbard stabs it back towards Junior English. Does well to hold off the challenge. It's Clark's ball up towards Taylor, who's done well to... Drops to Morley, who struck it first time. This left foot just got under it there, did Stefan Morley. Always rising in that, uh, towards that Leamington main stand. But uh, what a fizzer that would have been. In comes the corner. It's inviting. It's Taylor with a free header. Couldn't direct it on target. Well, what an opportunity for Spennymore there. Taylor just peeled away from the, uh, the Leamington bunch. No real power or direction behind his header. And uh, will Spennymore look to rue that opportunity? Come the full-time whistle as it remains 1-0 to the home side. Jake Weaver with a kick up. Edwards got his head to it. But there's a straight at Matthew Gould. Callum Gittins rising, but it breaks for Ramshaw, who spotted the run of Glenn Taylor, who's got the pace to get there. Tapped it past James Mace, cuts inside. Glenn Taylor with the effort, and it's squeezed past Jake Weaver. And into the bottom corner. And Spennymore a level with just 14 minutes remaining of the FA Trophy tie. And it's Glenn Taylor, Spennymore's top goal scorer, who strikes again, this time cutting inside past uh, James Mace. And... The shot just had too much venom in it for Jake Weaver to handle through the hands of the Leamington goalkeeper into the side netting. And all of a sudden, we're all square here at the Phillips 66. You have to say that Spennymore have uh, been a much improved side in this second half, putting the Leamington penalty area under siege. In comes the corner kicks, an inviting one. It's met by the head of James Mace, headed to safety by Clark. Strike towards goal was uh, by uh, Mark Anderson. Calls for hands, nothing given as Leamington looked to break down the other end. Stab through towards Dunbar. Chandler with a vital challenge on Kieran Dunbar. English's cross. Has it found a way through? It has. Jack Edwards makes sure at the back post and sends the Leamington fans behind that goal into Bedlam. As Leamington restore their lead, just a matter of minutes after Spennymore got themselves back on level terms. It was a teasing ball in by Junior English. It wasn't dealt with by the Spennymore Town defence. And Jack Edwards made sure at the back post, stabbing home past the helpless Matthew Gold. And it's Leamington 2, Spennymore Town 1. And maybe, just maybe, the FA Trophy dream remains alive for the breaks. Weaver, Edwards helps it on, Taylor into the penalty area, hold, holds off the challenge of Curtis, gets the ball across, it will come out for uh, Jack Edwards, inside to Dunbar, Edwards, Leamington need to take care in possession now, Edwards with a little dink through towards Dunbar but it will run away from the winger and it will uh, be a goal kick to Spennymore Town. Is Taylor. 
smacked away and it's Leamington, an extraordinary win for the Brakes as they book their place in the first round proper of the FA Trophy and it's a brilliant performance from the Brakes who take their winning streak to three in all competitions, three wins on the spin. Connor Taylor made the most of his opportunity up front, opening the scoring for the Brakes. A precise effort placed in the bottom corner, 18 minutes. Glenn Taylor pulled the game back for Spennymore with an effort of his own, but it was Jack Edwards with the winner, 10 minutes from time, stabbing home at the back post. Spennymore sieged Leamington's penalty area for the whole of the second half, but it's the Brakes who go through to the first round proper of the FA Trophy. The Leamington players, the, the 11 that started, are the 11 that finished the game after 95 minutes. And it's them who deserve all the credit, worked their socks off for the entire match. And it's finished here, Leamington 2, Spennymore Town 1. Well, Paul, a really determined performance today from the boys and a good character shown to make sure that they put their place in the first round of the FA Trophy. Just give us your thoughts. Well, fantastic, yeah. I mean, it's... Um we were well aware, you know, what a good side many more are. Um, I think we've seen that in spell second half, and they really probably got control of the game. Um, but I think possibly at the start of this, going into this week, you know, with Bradford, with Banbury, and then obviously spending more here. Obviously, they had some difficult, a couple of difficult games. Certainly, we had some difficult periods defensively. You know, we, we sort of got stripped it back to basics. Ask players to defensively let's try and get the basics let's defend our box better um, let's take responsibility let's be more aggressive defensively I thought we'd lost it a little bit in, in them areas uh, and I think this week we've had a test of everything I think uh, you know at, at uh, Bradford I thought we come out the blocks for a side that hadn't won for a while come out really positively and put the game to bed properly in 15-20 minutes uh, against Banbury was real good football but then the, the flip side again we've conceded two good deliveries Decent goals against the run play probably, but then we showed the character to come back and win that game. And I think today was another level completely because um, against a really good side um, with the issues that we've had leading into the game, um, players, the number of players there that haven't had a lot of match practice, um, and for them to come up with performances like that, especially like Kieran Dunbar and, and Connor Taylor, um, you know, it's I think everything I asked for probably. Last Thursday going into this week, I've got I've got that and more really, and it's it's really pleasing because I've been sort of saying we've been doing all right, we're doing all right, but we've you know playing some good football as well and we're creating chances, but we you know we've been defensively we've been sloppy all over the pitch, but I think we we stripped it back, good work ethics, um, I it was cracking cup top, um, and I think even when they come back to one one and spending more looked uh, the more dominant side of that period. We still found a way to find a little bit of quality, great ball in, good desire in the box, and probably when you weigh all up from start to finish, we, we might have just about deserved it. I think, which is uh, fantastic for us. I think we're benefiting as much as I talk about us lacking defensively, and that I think we're benefiting the fact that we were a bit stop-start with games. I think one or two of the lads we brought in needed minutes. Steph Morley needed minutes. Maylock needed minutes. Carline needed minutes, I think, after the, you know, and we're just getting minutes into people now. The run of games has helped us, and I think we just look a bit fresh, nice, fresh, and sharp. And yeah, we've got good options now. I think, if anything, that you can see today, to have to come into today's game without Callum, without Dexter, without Josh, who looks really sharp at the moment, you know, it's really come back well, uh, without George Carlon, without Josh Marsh, and to still perform like that against one of if not you know the certainly top three in this league and go toe to toe you know it wasn't like a back to the wall job they had spells we had spells uh, it's a real credit to the squad I kept saying it's not the biggest squad in the world but it's it's got good depth in it and good competition for places and um, you know you know the players that have come in today uh, who didn't play last week who didn't start last week um, you know like um, Connor Taylor Gitto uh, Kieran you know tremendous performances really and you touched on the uh, obstacles facing you just before kickoff. Just give us a few a few words on the registration problems. That yeah, listen, listen. I've been here ten years, and um, you know we've we, we, we've we've never had any issues. But listen, we, it came to light yesterday afternoon that there was um, a registration problem with the, the four outfield loan players. Uh, listen, the parent clubs have all got permission. It's nothing to do with them. It's nothing to do with the players. It's it's me and Richard. You know we've we've made a mistake. Um, uh, and 
you know, have apologised to the clubs and the players, and you know, especially the supporters as well now, because it's, you know, it, it shouldn't be happening at this level. It's something we shouldn't, you know, we should be better than that. Um, but as I always say to players, you know, listen, when we make mistakes, we got we got to learn from them. You know, we'll learn from that one. Um, and we've been bailed out. We've been bailed out. And it, as I said to the players before the game, I don't use it as an excuse. You know, there's probably two, maybe three players that have started that might and might not have. And they've been fantastic. So really, um, I think me and Richard Eady will be uh, giving them a bonus after the game but yeah but now listen it's, it's, it was a mistake on our part and uh, I've, you know me and Richard have got thousands of games between us and the experience of doing this and uh, we've, I think we both left it to each other after you after me scenario so it won't happen again